Um, entropy is the direction of movement that's on the process of making it or doing it. It's losing energy. Some examples of entropy, you can use petrol. Petrol is something that it's a lot of energy accumulated for millions and millions of years and stored in earth that once you take it out of the ground you process it and you're just losing energy and then once you put in your car you burn it you can never get that heat back and reuse in the car again or reuse for something else you know so in the process of doing it or making it you're losing energy so it's a fear of not having enough you know when you fear of not having enough you get scared when you get scared you kind of start accumulating stuff when you start accumulating you take out of the system when you take out of the system you don't have enough and that creates scarcity so scarcity creates fear, more fear, and that creates death, wars and death, you know? That's entropy, that's the direction of movement of losing it. On the other hand, we have syntropy. Syntropy is the direction of movement of accumulation. So you take energy, like let's say the sun, the sun, you take energy out of the sun, plants do it perfectly. They take energy out of the sun and they transform it in matter, in energy and food for the soil. And that accumulation, the process of making it, it accumulates more energy and creates systems of abundance. The best example of this is life. From one little seed, one big tree grows, on that big tree you get millions of seeds and from that millions of seeds you can make tons of seedlings and that from one little tree one little seedling you can actually build a forest you know so that's system of abundance life can do it pretty well so once we understand what's entropy what's syntropy and then we can talk about syntropic farming so syntropic farming it is mimicking the process of life the process of nature the processes of the forest mimicking the nature but putting the food production in the system so taking the rainforest as a model like the way that uh, how life performs on on the process of making it from where there was no life takes millions and millions of years of accumulation of energy and then after millions and thousands of years you have a rainforest you know humans are pretty good on doing the opposite we take a rainforest where there is a lot of energy accumulated we got a beautiful complexity complex system and then we say ah oh, I need some logs, I need to build a house, I need some money. And then they take, they cut all the trees and then they sell the wood. So there is less elements, less complexi complexity in the forest. And then they just start cutting all the trees. Once they cut all the trees, they need more money. And then they start planting. Ah, oh, let's plant corn. but. For millions, hundreds and thousands, hundreds, thousands and millions of years, nature has been accumulating energy on that soil. It's been building a lot of quantity and quality of consolidated life. So, and then after you take the forest out, there is a lot of energy on that soil. There is a lot of life. So, and then you come and do a monoculture of corn. You know, the first year, your corn is going to be beautiful because there is a lot of life in there. And you're gonna sell your corn for a good price you're gonna have make a lot of money and then on the second year your corn is not gonna be that good because and then you need to start bringing 
compost, fertilizers, because the life, the quantity and quality of life, consolidated life on that soil, is not the same. So, and then you're gonna plant corn another time and another time and bring in more inputs and then gets to the point where it's not sustainable anymore. You're spending more to plant the same amount of corn and harvesting less. And then you say, oh, come on, I can't plant corn anymore. So let's go with sugar cane. And then you change to sugar cane and then you start planting sugar cane. You put some fertilizers, some compost, some bring a lot of inputs and you might get a good yield, a um, good year of sugar cane. On the second year, you need to bring the double amount of inputs to harvest the same amount of sugar cane. And then that goes on and on and gets to the point where it's not sustainable anymore. And then you take the sugar cane and then you put some kettles in it. And then the kettles just keep doing the worst job that it can. It's like just degrading more the soil. So the process of making it it's not even sustainable, it's degenerative. It is entropic, so you're losing energy. You're losing all that, that life, that energy that was accumulated for mi thousands and millions of years. And after some years, maybe 10, maybe 50 years, maybe 100 years, not even grass will grow on that land anymore. And then you made enough money and then you're gonna leave that land and buy somewhere else and do the same, okay? So we humans, we are pretty good on going from that amount of life and degrading, degrading, degrading until we have no life. But nature, life, if we, humans leave that piece of land alone, life will go all the way back and gonna rebuild it. Might take another 50 years, might take another 100 years, might take another 1,000 years but will happen again, you know, slowly, nature knows how to do it. And that's what syntropic farming is. We're trying to go from degraded areas, building life, but speeding up the process of life. Instead of taking a hundred years, a thousand years, by understanding the principles of the forest, we might be able to speed up this process. Nature might take a hundred, a thousand years to get from no life to an abundant life, to a system of abundance. In syntropic farming, we can come from here in a really high speed, maybe in 10, 20, 30 years, we are able to accomplish that, what nature could do in a thousand years. So what is the difference between agroforestry and synthropic farming? Uh, when synthropic farming started in Brazil, it was called agroforestry. Because a lot of people was taking this, this name, agroforestry, and doing it in, with very... Um, just with few elements, two or three elements of the forest and calling it agroforestry. We, Ernest Goethe, the guy who created it, tried to come up with a name that could actually differentiate it and tell people that there is heaps more than one or two or three or five elements in agroforestry. So, and then that's when the name Syntropic Farming comes from and there are a lot of um, principles, uh, the principles, and there is a lot of theory behind it as well, that when you go deeper in it, uh, you can actually see more the difference.